I'm your host, Ken Patterson. We are at the 13th annual St. Louis Prototype Modelers Meet. I'm doing an outdoor photo shoot. We're going to talk about this table saw. That's absolutely magnificent. This is the best hobby in the world. The what's neat. What's neat. What's neat. What's neat starts now. Catch the What's Neat podcast every week and full episodes of What's Neat every month at the Model Railroad Hobbyist YouTube page. Richard, <laughs> I can't see you because of all the bright lights tonight. Yeah. These lights brighter tonight than before? They seem to be. Joshua? <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to say, I can't say. Sure. <laughs> oh, I got a letter in the mail this week with a picture of you on it. Yes. 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 So, I know. Man, You're just the guy I need, on the... I'm, I'm, the, I'm that guy on that podcast. All right. Thank you for that, Dennis. Yes. Semi-famous, guys. Semi-famous, right. yes. Richard, give us a countdown, and I am going to go get my show notes. Oh, okay. Ready? Ready? Three, two, one... The What's Neat This Week video podcast is supported by enthusiastic model railroaders just like you. <laughs> Further support is provided by Microengineering, keeping you on track with quality products for 55 years. Check out their website at www.microengineering.com. Order from your local dealer or order direct by calling 1-800 462-6975. Additional support is provided by Spring Creek Model Trains, your destination for model trains. Stop in and say, wow. Check out their website at springcreekmodeltrains.com. And by Intermountain Railway Company, where the detail makes the difference. Check out their website at intermountain-railway.com. Additional support is provided by Yelzma Graphics, America's leading distributor of quality railroad art and embroidered clothing since 1985. Check out their website at yelzma.com. Further support is provided by the NCE Corporation, the power of DCC. Visit their website at ncedcc.com. And thank you for supporting the What's Neat This Week podcast. This is the What's Neat This Week in Model Railroading, show number 274 for May 13th, 2024. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, the host of the What's Neat show over at Model Railroad Happiest Magazine, of which I have 48 hours to get that show out. Mm -hmm. And I still don't know what's going to be in it yet. <laughs> I know that busy. sounds crazy, but um, actually I have some ideas. And it's just a matter of spending the next two days getting that show out and this show out. We are recording tonight on... The 13th, which is a Monday. A we, Monday, I yes. know. We elected to set Saturday out because we are, we're awaiting some new news that's coming in. So sitting here next to me, I've got Mike Buddy. Hey, Mike. Hi, everybody. And sitting on the other side of me, I've got Stephen Mantia. Hello, everybody. And we're going to shoot for 20 minutes tonight. We've got new news and a lot of other things. I'm going to start out right away with... Um, more information about the Garden Railroad that I am now starting to actually work on and focus on. Uh, I sprayed a lot of weed killer out there this week. Mm -hmm. To, uh, I mean, it's these weeds we have are got little points on them. They're yeah. the ones that get the purple flowers, but they're very wicked. You can't even pull them out by your hands. Yeah. Nope. And those have got to go. I was thinking about putting maybe a bridge around this this dog this dog bone area. Maybe build another bridge there at some point. But otherwise, just vegetation ki killer and dig out the trenches for water drainage. That's another big thing that's got to be done. I would probably paint the cement the roadbed at some point. Um, but these are the things that need to be done before I even start fixing the track out there. Over on the deck area, the cement sometimes tends to settle mm -hmm. or, or sink in the mud over right. time. And my best fix for that is since the sections are so strong is to just pry bar Jack them up, up yeah. shim That's it out with some do. rocks, and just try to fix the settling uh, problem out there with just material. So that's the process before I even start laying the track. So nothing really exciting. 
I mean, I literally think that it, once that bent rail section is replaced, I could put that track together and run it. But I think it's better to go through the process of starting step one, yeah. dig out the trenches. Right. You know, step two, fix that tunnel out there that needs to be fixed. That's got to be done before anything can be run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just want to get this, just focus on it because the weather has been so good now. Mm -hmm. Very nice, yes. And I'll be able to enjoy the sound of the amazing cicadas that have started singing yesterday here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they are getting louder by the day. Yes, they are. Yeah. Yeah. Everywhere, everywhere they're, they're at, you're seeing them now, so. There's uh, other news out there. In fact, um, Kalmbach Publishing has been purchased by a company called... Firethorn? Okay. Reddit? Bring up that thing that you had on your phone, yeah. because we are going to talk about this probably in depth. I'm reaching out to the... Fire Red Crown. Fire, Fire Crown. Crown. Fire Crown Media. Okay. And they, uh, they acquired trains, model railroader, classic toy trains, classic trains, garden railways, trains.com, and fine scale modeler. So that company, I think, is in Tennessee, so Chattanooga or something? Yes. Yeah, yes. But Chattanooga. all the people, I think, are, are going to be able to stay in Milwaukee, the people that work there for Kalmbach, for those magazines. So that's good for them, for sure. That's very good. Um, and I'm sure they're extremely pleased and happy and excited mm -hmm. about this new acquisition for our beloved magazines. This is like somebody just bought our family, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. um, uh, this ordinarily would be huge earth-shaking news, and in a way it is, but what I would expect this company to do would be to pour money into the magazine mm -hmm. and work on making whatever, making it what better you, the youth wants, what mm -hmm. we want. Right. I mean, we grew up with that magazine. I know. It was, you know, always, hard. always being delivered in the mail. Yeah. Yes. The, right. You the got fifth to come in an envelope. Mm -hmm. time oh, to how exciting time, that was! Time to renew yeah. the subscription in that. I yes. would, when yeah. I was in, uh, let's think, I guess junior high school, I would ride the bi-state bus downtown from Oakville downtown to Woolworth mm -hmm. so I could buy my model railroader magazine. You're going to make us all feel old. Yes. By state, Stop. Woolworth, come on, this all these old awesome. names that we That's use all the I time. I got my first yes. uh, Athern High Cubes and <laughs> piggyback flat cars, 85 foot flat cars was at Woolworths downtown. Man, it's hard to believe you could buy trains and blue car box, models my blue box. anywhere. Yeah. My, yes. my first Athern diesel was an FP45 in a Santa Fe War bonnet, red and silver, mm -hmm. and oh my God! I mean, I was so excited about that that the that summer when I was at Philmont, and I knew I was working my way through the summer to be able to buy this engine for fourteen dollars. Right, I had to save money to for fourteen dollars. It's okay when I was a kid, I saved money to buy the mousetrap game, but that's a whole nother show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I had the, whole... the other one, alarm clock. I had that whatever that one was. But it was it was just yeah wow god the good old days yeah, right? right but I got that Atherd engine I was in Philmont New Mexico on that Boy Scout hike out there and uh, that week I took a piece of pine and carved out an FP forty five with my Boy Scout knife out of out of wood <laughs> that's how I was into trains back then kind of a crazy thing so what we're planning I've reached out to the um, proprietor proprietors the owners um, and we are striving to have them possibly on the show next week to tell the story and talk about this. Nice. I mean, Great. questions, for example, I want to ask the question, what's going to happen to the layout? You know, oh, the, are they going to uh, save the layout? Milwaukee or are they going to move it? Was it built to be <laughs> moved? There's yeah. questions. I have questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because they are changing buildings, I think, aren't they? Yes. Aren't they going to rehab that Kalmbach building and... Like turn it into condos or something. I don't know. I believe they sold the building. Uh, Mike, did they say they have other magazines that they have part of this company also? Uh, Is that why they're doing they, it? they have other publications Public. focusing on aviation industry and I think uh, boating. Yeah, that, that's yeah. Media providers serving the aviation, boating, and logistics industries. Yeah, so okay. So apparently they're well established. Mm -hmm. um, that's, it sounds like they're, they're, they're already inspiration to avid hobbyists, enthusiasts, and scientists throughout their existing brands. So that, that's good news.
I think it is. Yeah, I yeah, agree. Keep, keep it moving in the right direction if right. somebody would get it to grow type of thing. Stay tuned more. on that. Um, other new news. Um, Curtis Koch, that wonderful young man at Broadway Limited Imports, uh, asked me to mention this on this podcast uh, because by the time the What's Neat show comes out, it'll be too late to say this. This conductor's club that they've got, um, for that this offer for the new locomotives that he announced that are really, really cheap, like you can get a big boy in N scale, I mean, for like $199 mm -hmm. in the Stealth series. Yeah. Um, this sign up for this in order to get these engines, these special engines they're coming out with, ends May 30th. So it's important to get on the Broadway Limited website <laughs> if you want the Union Pacific 3985, which is the articulated H of scale engine they're coming out with, uh, and 3977, which is the <clears throat> Greyhound version of that, uh, with Paragon Sound and or Stealth. In order to get those prices that they've got of 349 and 249 for either Stealth or not Stealth, You've got to be able to sign up for this by the 30th of May so they understand what numbers they need to do for production and in order to get everybody to have them by mm -hmm. December. Mm -hmm. So it's important to check that out. Go to their website for further information if you want to belong to that cl conductor's club, which has got some neat perks. Uh, what else is written on here? Um, when you purchase these models, it's a $100 down payment plus the price of shipping, and then the remaining balance will be charged or billed to you when these things arrive in December. Because I think the membership is what, like $30 a year, I think is yeah. what it is. So that yes. it gives you the opportunity to get the, the, the locomotives that, uh, at a discounted price. Right, the N-scale models are the big boy, 4014 and 4019, and the HO scale model, like I said, was 3095 to Challenger, and 3977, the models are gorgeous. And you can't beat the prices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the most important stuff I've got on my show notes at the very moment. What do you got going on, Mike? What'd you bring tonight? You got some cool um, cars there. Uh, yeah, these are Rapido tank cars. Um, tank cars have always been kind of a mystery to me because um, I, I I never knew how to tell the age on them. And, uh, I, you know, I had a couple Athern tank cars as a kid, which I still have. But uh, they always had like a heavy walkway around the edge, you know. Right. And I, I think, I don't know, sometime in the late 70s or something, they started put, just putting this safety rail along the bottom instead to keep, uh, I think, keep workers away from the, the trucks, keep, you know, keep them away from the rails. But anyway, uh, one cool thing about Rapido is whenever they come out with a new model, they give you a lot of background on it and uh, what era it's appropriate for and everything. and. Um, so they, they said these cars were built in 69. I, I watched a video today with uh, Jason, or Jordan, I can't remember which one. But anyway, um, he, he gave, gave the history. To, uh, they were built from 69 to 84. And uh, I've got the early versions, which these models actually came out like in 2019 or 2020. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but I just didn't pay any attention because I didn't know much about tank cars. But... When I saw the new, they've got a new release now, they're taking pre-orders for, and uh, most of them are too modern for my era, but there's some really cool ones like the yellow safety clean tank cars. I remember seeing a lot of those. And uh, they've got some more modern schemes, the pro car with the, the big letters, pro car. And uh, anyway, um, they, all, they give a little bit of the history behind the companies, and Procar is the Canadian or arm of uh, uh, United Tank, or Union Tank Car, and then North American Car is is uh, headquartered in Chicago, but they I think all these tank cars are built in uh, the same plant now in Louisiana. In Louisiana. There you go. Procar is headquartered in uh, Canada. So anyway, um, this is their old logo. Now you always see them with the big white letters, Procore, and they're they're just a leasing company, just like uh, Union Tank Car or North American Car. Um, you know, serving the petroleum industry and you know leasing cars for whatever. But uh, do both if, cars have those vents on them, or is that on just one? Uh, they're both the like car? that. Yeah. What are those vents? Do you know what about that? Uh, you know? No, but I know they're separately applied parts, That's but it's nice. a certain and then. 
the uh, outlet on the bottom are specific to the the type of uh, of commodity or the type of rail uh, which railroad used them. Okay. So there are differences, but it's got all the brake rigging and everything on it, and uh, they're really really nice models. This might be a model that would it would be worth putting uh, Proto eighty eight wheels on if you could. You know the right. real thin tread because they're. The wheel treads are so visible on these tank cars, but uh, I mean, as they look, they really look good. So um, at least I, I have a little bit of uh, a few tank cars to run in my my era of 1978. Rapido so. makes some amazing models. Did you buy them at a store in town, or did you? No, because I, I, everybody's out of them. These okay. are are old, you know, okay. a, mm -hmm. a few years old. So I bought them on eBay. Okay. And one came from Canada, but uh, after I bought this. Procore, I jumped on it right away and, and found out later on that uh, they were originally painted with uh, Union Tank Car UTLX re reporting marks, and then in 1981 they painted those out and started using PROX, which is the version I got. So my model is from 1981, which is too new for my. <laughs> so I, I don't know, it's no big deal, but uh, I, I think they're per really, really nice models. So um, I'll keep the terms so they don't roll away. They look tiny compared to this Gigantosaurus. <laughs> well, anytime you have the old scale, you're yeah. always that type of thing. So it yeah. always makes a difference. That is really cool. So what's this? What is that? It's actually pre-war Lionel. Um, you know, the, has the little vestibules in the center. Yeah. I've not run it. It's again it came in one of the collections you've p picked up. This that is pre-war. Yes, pre-war. And, that's and the box is in fabulous and I know. Condition. That's the reason I brought it along with, with here is the fact that it still had the box. For 1936. It. Wow. And you had the box there, and I've uh, got the other boxes for the other passenger cars. That way, I thought you know need to bring something uh, different and. This that jumps out. It is. looks very nice. It's and, beautiful. Uh, it's let me give it a. I have to maybe give it a test run to see how it actually. We uh, need a test works track. It. We have. You know, we've got dioramas, so we could take a stunning <laughs> photograph of yeah, this so, outside. You know, I can imagine right? having a. <laughs> but what we don't have is a running. Yeah. Three rail, which would. I've got a lot of beautiful Bachman stuff back here that's mm -hmm. been sitting on shelves for twenty years. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, it would just be beautiful to see some of this stuff run and hear it run. The magic of this yes, is the sound, the sound yes, of this old exactly. stuff. This is unique in that it has, it's a Talgo style, I guess you call it, where the, it has one truck between mm -hmm. each unit. And, and these are actually separate pieces, these chrome things. Yes. And the, the car bodies lift on and off. Mm -hmm. but, they come uh, right off like that. It's just a... That was a... Uh, I've never seen anything like that before. I thought that was really, really unique. So I have to break it right here. Yeah. See, I mean, you've got the the light inside. And that so I guess that reflected enough to light mm -hmm. up the whole the car. Whole inside oh of the God, car. These are that beautiful. Type of thing. And they're very light. Mm -hmm. This might just be aluminum, isn't it? Is it? I don't know. It's yeah. probably was aluminum. It's amazing to me that it it's still. It, it has not been restored, but it looks like it's that one's the new. most rusty. The rest of mm -hmm. them look the rest pretty, of them look pretty good. I, I, when I was looking some more information about it, you can see the right. well, oxidation cool. or whatever you call it Man. on the top of it. But uh, and I still think the, the way the front looks. It's cool as heck. Is this a certain prototype? Is that supposed to be the Zephyr or? I think it would, um, I was, again, I was reading some more information. I think it was more. Not more of the mainline railroads used it type of thing, but yeah, uh, that does look like doesn't. the shovel nose Zephyr that we have at the Museum of Transportation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All that uh, same type of body style. The, the, the engine Art would be Deco, the same. Is that what it's Didn't called? Yeah, yeah. all with, trying to go with that. Yeah, like a little th situation. That's really neat. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. cool. You just can imagine it, you know. It probably came out the same thing once a year, went around the Christmas. Right. Probably went around the Christmas tree and probably went back into uh, yeah. back into the box and set that type of thing because there was a couple other of um, older sets that from the collection I picked up that had this. Wow. So they were all in this 
type of condition. You know, the little, you can tell they were used a little bit, but not... But well, um, well stored. <laughs> well stored yeah. and uh, type of well things. Well packaged. The, the same problem with some of the other boxes. You know, you've got the flaps that come off, things mm -hmm. that way. But um, the, the main thing for me is when you're going to display it, it really doesn't matter what the box looks like. You right. want the uh, You want the train car to look the best, to look smooth that way, so... Yeah. Always something different to have. For sure. Um, you had a photograph of Brad Joseph on a passion oh, train yeah. last week, and we were about to shoot a show last week, two days ago. You told me the story, <laughs> and then five minutes later, we're like, we're not going to shoot the show. <laughs> Remind me. Um, Brad and his wife, Lynn, took... Joseph. Brad yeah, Joseph. Brad Joseph, yeah. Okay. Um, he was on a few weeks ago with, uh, about, with that Oh, with the passion cars. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Brad. They took, I don't know their exact route, but they were taking the, the uh, Via Railroad across Canada, and they stopped where Rick Schoenfelder lives. Okay. And that's the guy that you were looking for, to, whose name you were looking for to give the shout out at the end of the podcast. When I got up and started wandering around the room, <laughs> yeah, this right. is starting to become more and more often. I get up from my <laughs> just, seat just and wander, wander around, around yeah, the well, room. Well, yes, you're getting up there but I age. had a purpose. I was looking for that. That guy's name, yeah. Well, anyway, it's Rick Schoenfelder. Rick. I was looking yeah. for Rick's name because I wanted to give Rick a shout out and say thank you. Yeah, I've known him he for like. He showed to me that our donate button still operates. <laughs> uh, well, we didn't know yeah. if it actually still worked, and I was supposed to look and see and let Ra uh, let Randy Hook know because he's rebuilding me a new website. But the donate button actually works. Yes. So anyway, Rick is coming, making the trip down from Canada to the RPM this summer. So we'll get and to he took a picture of Brad Joseph on, right, the, on train. the train. On the train, yeah. Why? Right. So he met up at the train station. Right. Wow. Yeah. That was that was the point of this whole story. Oh, okay. And he <laughs> never lives, got there. No. And he lives up north where it's still cold, so he could buy yes. a what's neat jacket. I forgot the name of the town. Kamloops. Kamloops, British Columbia. Kamloops. Yeah, I've got. I recognized the name as soon as he said it. I said, I know a guy with, that lives there, and that, that's when we started, me and Brad started talking. So, anyway, Rick. <laughs> All right, hey, so Rick. I got my What's Neat apron on. Um, it's great for doing dishes. I've actually used to have one of these. I got. Uh, I had to add an old apron, but it's got so much paint on it. It's just, it's like. It's color what art. What about barbecuing? Um, I don't really make a mess when I barbecue, so I don't need an apron. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't. Yeah, I'm a I very clean barbecuer. Also. But the fact is, this is my Denny Yelzma. Um, mm -hmm. He makes more than just jackets. Now, yes. you know, Rick Schoenfelder could buy a jacket and still wear it now, although it was chilly today. I wore my What's Neat jacket today when we went out earlier. Um, but Denny sent us, he sent you the picture. Yes, the with picture, your face. With that semi-famous person, yes. You know. <laughs> but he said, think of, think of things and talk about things that don't require you to wear a jacket, like T-shirts or summertime apparel, mm -hmm. you know, like the golf towels. He said, bring that up. Talk about the train clubs that might want to have beautiful embroidery logos of their train club for their shows or for just mm -hmm. their get-togethers, right? Uh, or talk about corporate work. Like mm -hmm. Steve Mantia bought a shirt for his company. Yep. Yeah. And if had Steve shirt, had yeah. dozens of employees, he would have bought dozens of the shirts yes. that say Target Electric on them, cool. all stitched out. And so yeah. Denny gave us some examples of that. Uh, like the, for example, the uh, Burlington. No, no Julington, Ju Julington Creek. Creek. Julington <laughs> Creek. <laughs> Which glasses do we have on now? Yeah. Lawn care. Yeah. Some other ones, the Cold so. War Circle was another one. Uh, the Cold War Veterans. And I've got the titles of these on this paper this time so you actually can see what they are because the front of this next one, the E or the C and E L front of the locomotive, I would have never known that railroad straight off the front like that. I've seen those locomotives from the side. But that's again, that's really cool stuff here. Mm. The Florida East Coast uh, Railway Oh yeah. Society of 2024 right here, this logo. See, this is these are clubs, these are corporate, mm -hmm. but he still's got the train stuff here. We got the uh, Kansas City Southern F7s, AB and logos right here. Uh, Work I've, Workman Creek. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Michigan Valley Railroad. Okay. So, uh, club. Yeah, and the 47 Cannon logo. Yeah, I was going waiting to see how you got that big yeah. cannon there for I guess there's a fire department. Cannon that's cool. restoration. That's beautiful. So, some really cool ideas here for summertime stuff. The Kansas City Omaha, 
right? Uh, Kansas, yeah, Kansas, Kansas City, City, Omaha, yeah, Des, Moines Des Moines Limited. And, uh, that would be a drum head for the back of a passenger car. Follow the flag, Wabash. And the next one is the Union Pacific logo over here on this PA unit. Yeah. Uh, this one actually, when I was downloading this tonight, you guys heard me audibly say, oh my God, that's pretty. Uh, check this out. This has got the four big locomotives of the Union Pacific. I see the DD40. Mm -hmm. I see a U50. DD40B unit, it looks like. But yeah. all four logos on a on a yellow jacket. That's beautiful. All right, because I see the other one on the next. Oh, look at this. Down another yeah. giant, okay. Steam. Giants of the West. Right. There. Yeah. yeah. So imagine having four locomotives that size on the back of a jacket. I is mean, the top just... is the top one a Challenger? <laughs> is a Greyhound Challenger? Looks like it. Yes. Yeah, that's the engine that Broadway Limited is coming out in HR scale. You guys can buy mm -hmm. that, really cheap. Um, okay, the next one is a B unit, a GP30 B unit in Union Pacific. Those are actually really cool, and I love this car. I had this concept from Wathers, the Olympian oh, Creek yeah. observation car, with the logo, Milwaukee mm -hmm. Road. Yeah, those yeah. are the most beautiful observation cars. What happened to those? Did they, they get sold off? I went up. I rode on. I got to be on one of those when we went to Milwaukee to the train and a yeah. show that was up there. Right. Oh my God, I've got pictures of that, but I don't know how clear they are. Maybe I shouldn't even show them. Um, <laughs> Stacy Wathers let me onto the train. <laughs> and it worked mm -hmm. out. It was really, mm -hmm. it was quiet. Nice. It was a nice atmosphere to have a conversation in. It's a very beautiful car. Um, next one is Yellowstone model here. Steam locomotive. And I've got another one of a jacket that a gentleman is wearing from Monon. Monon. Yeah. I used to call that Monon when I was Me too. I, I Monon. still don't know for sure. I think it's <laughs> Monon. But check it out. If you've got any ideas for corporate or for work or for your clubs, Denny Yelsma is obviously the place to go. Yes, he is. He he's can, such a nice guy. He, and he's he going to be here. I think he's coming to town again this summer for the RPM meet, I believe. Yeah, probably. If not, he's going to definitely send hats for us to give out. And I'm not going to tell you that I got a wild idea to possibly change the logo. Uh oh. Uh oh. Why? Well, Denny, uh, I'm, I'm, I, oh God, did I just say that? Can I edit <laughs> yes. this out before I go too far? Um, one of the shows, a few shows back, Denny had a beautiful logo, and I'm, it's not on this computer, it's on that one. But it was like our logo right here, mm -hmm. except it's got a, instead of this, nobody knows what that is. Um, who designed this? It was a cute idea. Whoever well, designed William it. William Sampson, I think it's he a designed cute, it. I it's think a it neat idea. Great, okay. man. But there was a steam engine coming out of here or something. Yeah. On one of the logos that we showed that Denny was making, and there was two color options of this one logo for this one club or something, or mm -hmm. a museum in Colorado or something yeah. to that effect. And I just thought the color combinations were beautiful, and I envisioned what's neat in model railroading. We, we called it what's neat this week. We put the words in model railroading under it later on because they thought we were a biker game, gang, because they didn't know really what, this doesn't say trains, the guy with the yeah. glasses. <laughs> Well, okay, it says I'm a geek with glasses. Show, yeah, and the, and the two <laughs> yes. pairs of glasses, especially. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean. So yeah, that's been and it's still been eating at me for going on two months now since we ran that show. I think mm -hmm. it was about two months ago. I still keep thinking about it, but not enough to do anything about it. I mentioned it to Danny, but I don't want him to print out something or make something yet because yeah. I don't want to. I don't. This isn't just my choice. Yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Okay, we covered the important news. Um, one thing is, too, that Spring Creek Model Trains in Dejler, Nebraska, also stocks Denny's jackets and things at their store. They have samples and beautiful ones out there. But remember that if you purchase from Spring Creek out there, to use the product code WNTW2024 to get free shipping on any orders over $250, which is essentially you buy an engine, you get free shipping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. right? Yeah. Anytime you can get free shipping is important, yes. So just keep that in mind. Check out their website. There's everything we talk about on this show is available on their website. They are the most wonderful people in the world. I love them, and I can't wait to see them at the RPM show here in St. Louis, too. Mm -hmm. Big news. Hello? I can't believe I didn't say this at the front of the show. Bachman Industries is coming to St. Louis to our <laughs> RPM meet. Our little bitty RPM meet, the little intimate show that we had like 20 years ago, has grown. Yeah, it has. And Bachman Industries is going to be there sharing all their Great. newest stuff. All That's right. exciting. Very nice, yes. That, Good deal. That puts you on a map. We covered it. We did it. See? Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll have Joshua possibly next week. Richard, thank you for running camera. Be sure to hit the bell, hit subscribe, right? Tell a friend about the show. Heck, watch the show on two devices and watch our numbers double that week. <laughs> we love you all. Thank you for letting us into your home. This is the best hobby in the world with some of the best people in it, always sitting around me. 
So we're gonna take our NCE system that we use to run our trains down here because it works and I love it. And we're gonna do this set. We're gonna run some trains, guys. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. I do wanna run a train tonight. We <laughs> should have run trains Saturday night while we were down here. We all bugged yeah. out. Yeah, I wanted to get out of here early. Once Holly found out when like I when you she came find out me? you get off work early. It's like, yeah, I wanna go. Should we make that a habit? I didn't know we could do that. We've never played hooky before. Well, I don't mind working around Josh's schedule. I love Josh you know, when he's here. If there's any nights he can come during the week, I, I, I'm available I miss usually. Him when he's not here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, okay. Um, ready, set, go on a thumbnail. We should do something oh. creative sometime for thumbnails. We used to do neat things. Ready? Me, the, uh, <laughs> okay. Look at camera one to show me your teeth. And ready, set. And we've got it. And Holly just got home. Let's do this. Let camera one roll so I can roll credits, Richard. Thanks for doing that tonight. Get some fuses, Mopac, Mopac Jack. Mopac Jack. <laughs> oh, we love you. <laughs> I saw, oh, I saw him today. <laughs> yes. And Brent, his wonderful son. Yes. God, Brent was like three years old when he came to our mm -hmm. Midwest Valley Club. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I saw them today, and he had a, he had yeah, a bad he, fuse, so. Got to get some new fuses, I told him. Yeah. Shit, we still managed to do 30.